जय हिंद एवरी वन माई सर डॉक्टर वंदना शर्मा फ्रॉम अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज माई सब्जेक्ट इज इंजीनियरिंग फिजिक्स कोड इज के एस वन जीरो वन टी एंड द टॉपिक विच आई एम डिस्कसिंग नाउ अर एज दैट इज वेव ऑप्टिक्स एंड इन वेव ऑप्टिक्स बेसिकली वी आर डिस्कसिंग टू टॉपिक्स फर्स्ट इज इंटरफेरेंस एंड द सेकेंड वन इज डिफ्रैक्शन सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी कम्प्लीटेड आर पार्ट ऑफ इंटरफेरेंस एंड नाउ आई हैव स्टार्टेड डिफ्रैक्शन एंड इन माई लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस अबाउट दैट वट इज डिफ्रैक्शन वट आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ डिफ्रैक्शन दैट इज फ्रेशनल एंड फ्रॉन हाउ फॉर डिफ्रैक्शन एंड आफ्टर दैट आई हैव स्टार्टेड विद आर फर्स्ट टॉपिक ऑफ डिफ्रैक्शन दैट इज सिंगल स्लेट डिफ्रैक्शन सो येस्टरडे वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट सिंगल स्लेट डिफ्रैक्शन वे आर वी हैव सीन दैट in case of a single slit diffraction pattern there is one principal maxima uh, which is having maximum intensity and then there are some secondary maximas with lesser intensities and uh, minimas so uh, th these three different type of uh, uh, patterns we are going to get there means we are going to get a, s a principal maxima which is having maximum intensity then a secondary maximas and minimas so that that was about your uh, uh, single slit diffraction pattern so the topic for today's discussion is uh, double slit diffraction these are the textbooks which i have already uh, referred uh, i have already told about these books in uh, my last lecture so you can refer these books for, uh, to study this uh, part of diffraction um these are the topics which we are going to cover uh, in this uh, diffraction uh, diffraction part so introduction and so just give me one minute we have already covered this diffraction uh, we have discussed about the introduction of diffraction types of diffraction that is fresnel and fraunhofer diffraction then we know what is the resultant of n simple harmonic motion so uh, we have gone through the result of this n simple harmonic motions which is a sin n delta by 2 upon sin delta by 2 Uh, this result we have seen that uh, when uh, n simple harmonic motions they are passing through a particular point and all those uh, uh, n simple harmonic motion if they are of same amplitude and if the phase difference between the successive rays that is same then the resultant is given by a sin n delta by 2 upon sin delta by 2 after that we have discussed about this fraunhofer diffraction due to single slit uh, now today i am going to discuss this fraunhofer diffraction due to double slit so that is the topic for today's discussion so from half of diffraction uh, at double slit so in order to study it again we are going to take the help of a single slit diffraction pattern uh, so we, here we are having two slits both are of equal bit and the spacing between them uh, that is taken as d here so as you can see there are two slits ab and cd of equal bit e so uh, we are having a picture like this that you are having these two slits the bit of each slit is same so if e is the bit of Uh, this first slit, then E is the bit of second slit, and the spacing between them that is taken as D. So E, uh, this this particular E or this particular E, or you can say this spacing is that particular part from where the light can pass, and this D is the opaque part from where the light cannot pass. So you have E and D here. The diffracted light, when light will pass through the, these two slits. initially you have a source of light here from that source of light you will get the parallel light rays with the help of a convex lens then you are having another convex lens which is going to converge uh, the diffracted light rays over the screen xy and you know over the screen xy uh, the light rays which are diffracted through same angle they will converge at same point uh, what i mean to say here that if you are having 10 light rays which are diffracted through angle theta all those 10 light rays they are going to converge at a single point over the screen xy if uh, you are having 10 different light rays which are diffracted to an angle of theta dash then all those light rays will converge at a single point now we are taking a general point uh, uh, over the screen xy let that point is p now that point p can be a point of principal maxima that can be a point of minima that can be a point of secondary maxima so uh, in under what condition you will get principal maxima or minima or secondary max maxima that will be decided by the resultant amplitude at that uh, point so uh, how those maximas and minimas are decided so we will discuss with the help of this diagram here so what you have you have a source of light here so you have this monochromatic source of light here then the lens l1 which will uh, which will make all these light rays which are coming from an infinity as parallel light rays 
and these light rays will illuminate this combination of two slits. So, this is the arrangement of two slits as you can see here that A B is the first slit and C D is the second slit and these two slits they are of equal width. So, if I am saying A B is E then this C D is also E. So, S 1 that represents the central part of uh, slit A B and S 2 that represents the center part of uh, your slit uh, C D uh, that is second slit. And the spacing between these two, that spacing is actually BC, this is the spacing between these two and that spacing is taken as D. And this, uh, this term that E plus D means this combination of transparent part and opaque part, this combination is known as grating element, right. So, uh, you have another lens L2 here. The role of this lens L2 is that when the light rays will pass through this arrangement of uh, double slits, then after passing through the, uh, those two slits, uh, the light will get diffracted at different different angles. And the role of this uh, lens L2 is to converge the light rays which are diffracted to same angle at same point. Uh, so, as you can see here, you are having this ray, uh, I am referring to this particular ray, you are having this ray this one as well as this one. So, you can see there are three rays which are passing undiffracted. So, the role of this L2 is to converge all those undiffracted light rays at single point. So, the point of convergence will be P here. Now, you can see this particular ray. So, I am taking a different color uh, to represent it. So, if you are seeing this uh, blue line, this blue line is diffracted through certain angle. Let that angle of diffraction is theta. And this, there is another line uh, which is coming from second slit which is again diffracted to an angle theta. So, these two light rays which are uh, which are diffracted to an angle theta, they are going to converge at single point and let that point of convergence is P dash. Now, over this point P dash you can get maxima, you can get minima, you can get secondary maxima. That will be decided by the resultant amplitude at that point. And you know if you want to find the resultant amplitude at point P dash, then that resultant amplitude or resultant intensity that will be uh, given by the part difference uh, between these interfering rays. So, uh, what exactly is happening here? You have slit AB, this is the first slit AB and you know according to Huygens theory this, that each and every part of this slit AB that will act as a source for secondary wavefronts means the diffraction of light will take place from every part of slit AB. Similarly, you have second slit CD and again ac according to Huygens theory, every part of CD will act as a source for secondary wavefronts means diffraction of light will take place from every part of CD. So, if I am saying that AB is having n parts, then the diffraction of light will take place from every part of that slit. If I am saying CD is having n equal parts, then the diffraction of light will take place from every part of uh, slit CD. And these rays, they are representing the resultant of all those n light rays which are diffracted through same angle. So, this ray, if I am saying this ray is ray number 1 which is diffracted through an angle theta. So, actually this ray is the resultant of n, uh, these n light rays which are uh, diffracted through an angle of theta. And this second ray, this one. This second ray is again uh, representing the amplitude, resultant amplitude of those n simple harmonic motions which are diffracted to an angle theta. So, these two rays, two rays are obtained from this, uh, from these two slits and both the rays they are of equal amplitude. Uh, so, now you have to refer uh, that single slit diffraction pattern. You know in case of single slit diffraction, the resultant of n light rays which are of um, same amplitude and which are diffracted through same angle, their resultant is given by R. So, just give me one minute. Mm. So, you are having uh, two light rays here and these two light rays, they are of equal amplitude. The amplitude of this one will be R and the amplitude of second ray is also R. So, two light rays are there, they are of equal amplitude, they are diffracted through same angle and they are going to converge at this point. So, over this point P dash, two light rays of equal amplitude are superimposing and you are getting uh, a pat diffraction pattern here. If I am uh, talking about P, then over P again you can see there are two right light rays uh, which are diffracted uh, through 0 degree, they will converge at that point and you will get uh, the resultant uh, pattern over point P. Now, uh, we are taking a general angle of diffraction, uh, we are taking theta as the angle of diffraction. Now, this uh, uh, over this point P dash, 
uh, under what condition you will get maxima, under what condition you will get minima, that we are going to decide with the resultant amplitude at p dash. So, in order to find this, what I am going to do here, as you can see, uh, there are two light rays, both are of equal amplitude, that is r is the amplitude between them, uh, sorry, r is the amplitude of each and every component. You can find the phase difference between these two rays. If you want to find the phase difference, first you have to uh, find the part difference. So, if you want to find the part difference, draw a normal from this point, let this point is S1. Draw a normal from S1 on this uh, line number 2. If you will draw a normal, then this angle will be your theta. And the part difference, and if you will see uh, these two rays, that is ray number 1 and 2, then beyond this line, beyond this AM, both the optical paths will be equal. It means the part difference between 1 and 2 is basically this one, that is your S2M. This particular distance is the part difference. And this S2M, according to this triangle S1, S2 and M, this, uh, this will be equal to S1, S2 sin theta. So, uh, this part difference between ray number 1 and 2 is S1, S2 sin theta. And you can see here that S1 is representing the central part of first slit. It means this particular distance will be A by 2. This is your B. And since S2 is representing the central part of second slit, so if it is a central part, then this distance is A by 2. So this is A by 2 plus B plus A by 2 means S1 and S2. In totality, it will become A plus B sin theta. So this is your part difference. Delta is a part difference. And you know, sorry, this is not e, uh, A plus B, it is E plus D because AB uh, that is the width of the slit and CD, uh, this one is E and this one is D. So I have to write here, this is E plus D sin theta. This is part difference. Uh, and if you know the part difference, then phase difference will be equal to 2 pi by lambda into uh, part difference that is A plus B sin theta. So, now what you have? You have two rays, both are of equal amplitude and there is a phase difference of delta between them. So, you can find the resultant of these two. Two light rays, both are of equal amplitude R and they, they will superimpose over point P dash and you know the phase difference between them is delta dash. So, the resultant is given by this and that resultant, if I am representing that resultant by R dash, then this resultant will be equal to R dash square which is equal to r square plus r square plus 2 r square cos delta. This will be the resultant amplitude r dash square is r square plus r square plus 2 r square cos delta. So, that is the resultant amplitude at p dash. So, uh, uh, whatever I have uh, uh, derived here, I am going to explain with the help of next slide. So, all points of S1 and S2, they will act as source for secondary wavefronts as I mentioned. The secondary wave waves coming uh, in the direction of incident wave are focused at P. So, all the light rays which will pass undiffracted, they will converge at P. The diffracted waves are focused at P dash. So, you have two points there over the screen. P is the point where all the light rays which are having zero angle of diffraction, they will converge. And P dash is that particular point where the light rays which are diffracted through an angle theta, they are going to converge. The resultant amplitude at uh, P dash uh, is the uh, resultant from two slits, each of amplitude a, uh, r. So, you know what is r. r is a sin alpha upon alpha. You have uh, seen this through single slit diffraction that resultant of n simple harmonic motions that is equal to a sin alpha upon alpha. We have seen this part difference already. Uh, so, you have seen here the part difference is e plus d sin theta. So, that is written over here. The part difference between the two interfering rays, each of amplitude r is given by e plus d sin theta. If you know this part difference, what will be the phase difference? It will be simply 2 pi by lambda into e plus d sin theta. Now, what is done here? This, uh, 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 this term beta is taken and that beta is taken as pi by lambda e plus d sin theta. So, we are taking this beta as uh, pi by lambda e plus d sin theta. So, now you have this uh, pi by lambda e plus d sin theta. And uh, this is the, uh, this is representing, uh, this delta is representing the uh, phase difference. And uh, now the resultant at point, this particular point, resultant over P dash, that will be the, uh, that will be given by this simple relationship. 
So, the resultant at uh, point uh, uh, at that point P dash is equal to A sin n delta by 2 upon sin delta by 2. But in case of double slit, A is actually R which is A sin alpha upon alpha and n is taken as 2 because you are having two slits here. So, R dash is basically this A sin alpha upon alpha sin alpha upon sin delta upon sin delta by 2. Just after simplifying you are getting this, this is 2 A sin alpha upon alpha cos beta. And in simple words, using that triangle, you can also see this that you are having these two uh, light rays of equal amplitude and delta is a phase difference. So, the resultant will be equal to r dash square, which will be equal to r square plus r square plus 2 r square cos delta, right. If you will simplify it, then this r dash square basically it will going it is going to represent the intensity which is equal to 2 r square is common into 1 plus cos delta right and you know 1 plus cos delta that can be written as uh, this 2 r square will remain as it is 1 plus cos delta can be written as twice of cos square delta by 2 is it correct you know sin square of any angle 1 minus cos of double angle upon 2 and cos square of an, any angle 1 plus cos of double angle upon 2. So, this will become 4 r square cos square delta by 2 and you have already uh, represented this, you have already represented this delta by 2 with beta. This beta is actually delta by 2. So, you can see here uh, we are uh, substituting this delta by 2 as beta. So, I am replacing this delta by 2 with beta. So, what is your resultant intensity then? So, resultant intensity is basically 4, this is 4 r square cos square beta. So, this is the resultant intensity at point P dash and you know this r is actually a sin alpha upon alpha. So, this is your a square sin square alpha upon alpha square and this one is cos square beta clear. So, you are getting this expression you are having this expression i is equal to 4 i naught sin square alpha upon cos square alpha right and uh, if you will see it clear carefully then the first part this particular part this particular part is due to single single slit diffraction this is the contribution of single slit and the second one that is the contribution of double slit right. So, the resultant is 4 a square sin square alpha upon alpha square cos square beta and uh, uh, this is uh, th this particular term is the resultant intensity at point P dash. Now, this, this intensity is going to decide where you will get maxima, where you will get minimum. So, uh, you know the meaning of this alpha, what is, what, uh, what does the, this alpha stands for here? Alpha stands for pi by lambda a sin theta and beta stands for sorry this is E and beta stands for pi by lambda E plus D sin theta. So, you know the meaning of each and every term here uh, this alpha as well as beta. Now, with the help of this simple expression of intensity uh, we can decide the conditions for maximas and minimas, but what there is one important point here. So, in order to explain that point uh, again I am writing that uh, same expression here 4 a square sin square alpha upon alpha square into cos square beta. So, you have to understand one thing very clearly through this diagram. So, when light will incident over the slit A B or you can say when light will incident over slit C D then because of the diffraction you are going to diffract the light rays and those diffracted light rays which are diffracted through same angle their resultant is represented by this single ray of amplitude R, this single ray of amplitude R. Then these two rays of uh, same amplitude R, they are going to interfere and you are going to get this uh, pattern over point P dash. So, you are having two different type of terms here, these two terms. This particular term, it is representing the diffraction term and the second term, it is going to represent the interference term. Two terms are there. And these two terms, they are going to decide that whether that point P dash will be the point of uh, maxima or principal maxima or minima. So, there are two factors. The first one is A square sin square alpha and uh, the second factor is cos square beta. So, the first one is 
uh, this a square sin square alpha that is the intensity distribution due to any individual slit means that is a combination of a single slit. The second factor cos square beta that is the interference pattern. So, why I am saying cos square beta is representing the uh, interference pattern because cos square beta that is having only two possibilities means either it will be having maximum value that is 1 or it is having minimum value 0. There is no possibility, uh, uh, there is no other possibility for cos square beta means uh, either you are getting 1 or you are getting 0, 1 means maxima, 0 means minima. So, uh, uh, that is a, and you know in case of interference we have only one, two possibilities either maxima or minima, there is uh, nothing like secondary maxima in case of interference. So, that is the reason this cos square beta is representing our interference term. So, these two terms uh, when discussed uh, uh, in totality, they are going to decide whether you are going to get maxima there or minima there. So, in order to decide the condition of uh, maxima, you have this factor cos square beta. So, cos square beta if it is giving you 1, then you will get maxima. This will give you 1 and this will also give you maximum, uh, maximum value and you know from single slit diffraction this factor will take its maximum value when alpha will be 0 and if alpha will be 0 then this entire factor will give you only a square uh, that we have already discussed in case of single slit diffraction. So, I am discussing the condition only for cos square beta here. So, for maxima cos square beta will be 1, cos square beta 1 means that beta is equal to plus minus n pi right because only for uh, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi for all these values cos square beta will be equal to 1. So, uh, I am substituting the value of beta here, beta is pi by lambda e plus d sin theta. So, that will be equal to plus minus n pi for maxima, this pi will, uh, will be cancelled and the condition is becoming e plus d sin theta is equal to plus minus n lambda, where n starts from 0, it is having values, all integers values 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, this is the condition of maxima according to this interference term, e plus d sin theta is equal to plus minus n lambda and the condition for minima according to that interference term the for minima cos square beta should be equal to 0. So, the condition for minima is beta is equal to plus minus 2 and plus 1 pi by 2 and you know what is the value of beta, beta is pi by lambda e plus d sin theta. So, after substitution pi will get cancelled and you are getting e plus d sin theta is equal to plus minus 2 and plus 1 lambda by 2. So, this factor is representing uh, the condition of minima right and this equation number 6 is representing the condition of maxima. Now, these two factors when they will get combined you will get uh, your uh, pattern due to uh, double slit or you are getting your double slit diffraction pattern. So, how these two they are going to dis, uh, decide at which type of pattern you are going to get that I will explain with the help of the simple diagram here. So, since in case of double slit diffraction your i is 4 times a square sin square alpha upon alpha square and the second factor is cos square beta right and you know that according to the uh, diffraction term what is your diffraction term here diffraction term is uh, your a square sin square alpha upon alpha square according to this diffraction term for principal maxima when you will get principal maxima when alpha will be 0 when theta will be 0 that we have already done in our uh, previous lecture alpha 0 theta 0 that will be your principal maxima and uh, principal uh, for that principal maxima the maximum intensity is your a square. So, this will be the value of I am uh, writing it as i 1 and I am writing it as i 2. So, this i 1 will be equal to a square for principal maxima when theta is 0 alpha 0. You will get your minima you know what is the condition of minima from single slit diffraction you know you will get your minima when sin alpha 0 or you can say when alpha is equal to plus minus m pi this was the condition of your minima but m is not equal to 0 and the value of m will start from 1. So, this is the condition uh, for your minima here and you know the condition uh, that particular condition for minima in terms of theta is a sin theta is equal to plus minus m lambda right and uh, in case of secondary maxima you will get secondary maxima in case of uh, single slit diffraction when the condition alpha is equal to tan alpha will be satisfied you know this and you know the points of secondary maximas. The points of secondary maximas are plus minus 3 pi by 2, plus minus 5 pi by 2, plus minus 7 pi by 2 and so on, so on and you also know what is the intensities of those maximas. So, this is according to your uh, diffraction term and according to this interference term this cos square beta 
as I have already discussed in the last slide that cos square beta for maxima it will be 1 and uh, the condition in terms of theta will be this and for uh, minima cos square beta will be 0 and beta will take these values plus minus 2 and plus 1 pi by 2. So, now what I am going to do here you are having two different patterns. The first one uh, suppose along this direction you have I1 and along this direction you have uh, alpha. So, you know what is the graph between this A square sin square alpha upon uh, alpha and uh, this, this is the graph between your diffraction term that is I1 and alpha. You know this uh, principal maxima is having maximum intensity which is A square then next the secondary maxima first secondary maxima is having intensity uh, 4 upon 9 pi square a square then next one is having intensity 4 upon 25 pi square a square right and so on. So, the intensity of these secondary maxima will go on decreasing uh, with increase in those secondary maxima this is for diffraction term and that cos square beta if I am uh, writing cos square beta or you can say I2 along this direction and beta along this one then you know uh, that you are getting maximas for these values plus minus n pi you will get maximas. So, uh, your first maxima that will be at 0, then next one at pi, next one at 2 pi, next one at 3 pi and so on and similarly on the negative direction at plus minus pi, at plus minus 2 pi and plus minus 3 pi and you know that cos square beta is having maximum value. Uh, all the maximas they are of same intensity which is equal to 1 cos square beta is 1 for all maximas and for all minimas this cos square beta is equal to 0. So, this is a uh, graph between I2 and beta and this is graph between I1 and alpha. But you know in case of your secondary maxima the resultant intensity is a combination of these two. So, when these two will be combined and you know this particular point this, this is also theta is equal to 0 this is also theta is equal to 0. So, when uh, alpha will be 0 or theta will be 0 or theta will be 0 in both the cases this will give you one value this this particular factor will give you a square. So, if this is giving you a square this is giving you 1 what will be the resultant? This is giving you 1 it is giving you a square. So, resultant is 4 a square it means in case of double set diffraction your principal maxima that is having intensity 4 times of a square and a square is the intensity of principal maxima of single slit. It means in case of double slit the intensity is 4 times uh, the intensity of single slit. So, if you will combine these two then what type of graph you are going to see? So, that I will explain here. So, the combination of these two. So, just give me one minute. The combination of these two that will be your diffraction pattern due to double slit. So, just give me one minute to draw this graph. So, the combination of these two is like this. Now, you have i along this direction and I am writing theta because that is the common factor in these two. So, it will be like this. this is 4 times a square right. So, I should represent it like this. These uh, this outer envelope just give me one minute this outer envelope this one this is representing the diffraction part this one this one is representing the diffraction part this outer envelope and the uh, these fringes which you are seeing here these are representing your interference fringes. So, the outer envelope stands for diffraction part and the uh, inner one that is for interference this one is the diffraction part 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 and this one is the interference part. So, in case of double set diffraction you are getting this type of diffraction pattern. It is the combination of these two combination of these two factors where the first one is representing the diffraction part and the second one is representing the interference part. So, this is uh, about your uh, diffraction due to double slit. Now, in the uh, next one which uh, the topic which I am uh, taking here that is also related to double slit diffraction pattern. So, we have to decide the missing order in case of double slit diffraction. So, how you can decide that which order will be missing uh, from the diffraction pattern. So, that you can decide with the help of this simple formula. 
just see this formula. Since the resultant intensity in double slit diffraction pattern is a combination of these two, that is a square sin square alpha upon alpha square and cos square beta. Suppose this term is giving you maxima, you are getting maxima because of the, this uh, uh, diffraction, uh, this, uh, because of this interference term you are getting maxima. But if this term is giving you minima, means if the maxima due to this interference term is overlapping with the minima of this diffraction term, means if the interference term of uh, cos square beta that is observed at theta angle of diffraction and the minima due to diffraction term is also observed at theta angle of diffraction, then that particular or nth maxima will be missing from the spectrum. What I am saying, if the nth order maxima due to interference term is observed at theta and if mth order minima due to diffraction term is also observed at same angle means they are overlapping, then that nth order maxima will be missing from the spectrum. I hope you are getting this point. Uh, your interference term is giving you maxima, but the diffraction term that is giving you, giving you minimum intensity at that point. So, that nth order maxima will be missing from the spectrum. So, if I am saying you are getting maxima due to this term, then you know the condition of maxima uh, for cos square beta, that condition is E plus D sin theta is equal to plus minus N lambda. So, you are getting your nth order maxima at theta angle uh, because of cos square beta. And if you are getting mth order minima for single slit at same angle of diffraction, then the condition for minima in single slit diffraction is this, E sin theta is equal to plus minus m lambda. Since the angle of diffraction is common in both the cases, its nth order maxima is at theta and for single slit mth, mth order minima is at the same point. It means uh, these two are overlapping, so that nth order maxima will be missing. So, which order will be missing? What will be the formula for that? That you can find with the help of 1 and 2. Just divide 1 by 2. If you will divide 1 by 2, then what you are going to get? You are going to get this n upon m is equal to e plus d upon e. Means the order which is missing, the formula for that order is e plus d upon e into m. So, the formula is this. Now, you can take some examples. For example, uh, we are taking this first case. If e is equal to d. If I am saying E and D both are equal, then this factor is going to give you 2. So, now N will be equal to 2M. And you know, uh, in case of single slit uh, diffraction, this in minima, uh, th this M is starting from 1. It means uh, N is 2, first possible value 2, 4, 6 and so on. It means these orders will be missing from the spectrum, second, fourth, six. Uh, 8, these orders will, will be missing from the spectrum if E is equal to D. Uh, now, the second case, if I am saying E is equal to D by 2, if E is your D by 2, then in that particular case, this N is equal to 3M. So, if N is equal to 3M, you know N is starting from 1. So, the first order which, which will be missing, that will be 3, next will be 6, uh, next will be 9. So, all the multiples of 3, these orders will be missing from the spectrum. So, this is the way to find missing order in case of double slit diffraction pattern, right? So, this is a missing order uh, in uh, double slit diffraction. Now, the next topic which we will discuss here, that is our diffraction grating means uh, you have discussed about single slit diffraction pattern that if you are having a single slit and if it is illuminated with the help of a light source, then the diffraction of light will take place at different different angles. So, those diffracted light rays will converge over the screen and what type of pattern you are going to get that you have seen that you are going to get uh, principal maxima with maximum intensity then some secondary maximas and minimas that was the diffraction pattern due to single slit. Uh, and today, in today's topic, we have discussed about a uh, double slit diffraction pattern where we have seen that if we are having two slits of equal width and if D is the spacing between them, then what type of uh, uh, diffraction pattern you are going to uh, see there. So, you have seen that in case of double slit diffraction, the intensity of principal maxima is actually four times the intensity of principal maxima of single slit. Now, this diffraction grating, basically this diffraction grating, that is an example of n slits uh, diffraction that is a combination of n slits means now we are having 
n number of slits and n is very large and all these slits they are of equal bit and the spacing between successive slits that is also same. So you have n number of slits each slit is of equal bit and the spacing between the slits is also same. And exactly what is a grating? So grating is made, uh, made uh, ruling a large number of fine equidistance and uh, parallel lines on a plain transparent glass plate. So what is the meaning of this? So basically you have a plain glass plate and over this plain glass plate you have large number of lines. So these lines are drawn over this plain glass plate and basically uh, the light will not pass through uh, pass through that particular point where the lines is, line is drawn. So uh, light is not going to pass through this particular point, light will not pass through this point, light will not pass through this point. Light will pass through, uh, through the region that is in between these two lines means this will be the transparent, uh, uh, transparent surface from where the light will pass and this will be the opaque part from where the light is not going to pass. So I can say this is E, this one is E, this one is E, this one is E, this one is E. All these are your slits means light is passing through this, uh, these, uh, these spaces. So I am saying that uh, this is your slit width and uh, the line, uh, the width of the line uh, that is known as uh, your um, uh, spacing between the two successive slits. So this is your D, this is your D, this is your D, this is your D, this is your D on the similar lines as we have discussed in case of double slit diffraction. Generally, there are 10,000 to 15,000 lines per inch in a plane transmission grating. Why it is written over here? Uh, because we know that the main condition, the main criteria in order to get a diffraction pattern is that the dimension of the diffracting element and the wavelength of light source, light source both should be comparable to each other. This diffraction grating basically it is used to study the diffraction of visible light and if, uh, visible light that is having wavelength uh, ranging from 4000 to 8000 angstrom and if you are using such type of slit that is a slit having 10,000 to 15,000 lines per, uh, per inch only that slit will serve the purpose uh, where uh, the dimension of the uh, dimension of these slits will be uh, of the order of wavelength of uh, visible light. So that's why 10,000 to 15,000 lines are drawn over the uh, over that particular uh, plain glass plate. Now how the diffraction pattern is observed in a, a diffraction grating or in n slit arrangement that we will see in our next lecture. So that's all for today. Thank you so much.